anything that God has called you to do is going to have some challenges to come with. Amen. Amen. I want to remind you that in the, in the natural realm of things, uh, the greatest blessing that God had for his people was called the promised land. That was the greatest blessing that God had on the face of the earth. It was called the promised land. And my Bible tells me that when Moses went down into Egypt and uh, he helped to deliver the people of Israel, and he brought them out of Egypt, and they came through the wilderness. Uh, when it was time for them to go into the promised land, the Bible says that there were enemies in the land. Yeah. There were enemies in the land. Nothing is for free. Yeah. Nothing. Even the free stuff is going to cost you something. Yeah, Amen. And so we have to understand that even the things of God, the promises of God, the blessings of God, they are ours. And they belong to us, but there's going to be a fight. Yeah. There's going to be a battle. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against wickedness in high places. And so we come to that place now today. We must understand that there's going to be a battle. There's no way you can escape. There's going to be a battle. But, but the Bible says, fear not because I'm with you. So it's a fixed fight. Amen. It's a fixed fight. We win. But even, even the most fixed fight you can think of, if you don't show up, you lose. That's true. And so the enemy's job, the enemy's job is try is to try to get us to come to a place where we will not participate. Wow. We will not show up. You know, we live in a society today, especially with some of these fathers out here, and they say, you know, um, you know, I don't know how to be a good father, and some of you have some baby mama situations and all that. And so the solution is, well, I just, I just won't show up. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Let me tell you, I'm a father who's in the home 24-7, and I still get a C- minus from my wife. Amen. Oh, I, I, I still get I still get I still get I downgraded, downplayed, and sometimes even I want to give up. But 90% but of success, y'all, is just showing up. Yeah. It's just being there. That's why I love stories in the Bible with the four lepers. They didn't have a plan. They didn't have any weapons. Even, even King David, when he, he won that big fight against Goliath, there was no plan. There was no strategy. But when the opportunity presented itself, those brothers stepped up by faith. Amen. Amen. They stepped forward by faith, and God stepped in, and God did everything. So we understand there must be a battle. There must be a struggle. Now, why is that? Because the enemy doesn't want us to win. Amen. Amen. His job is to hinder the people of God anywhere that he can. His, God, his job is to disrupt. His job is to cause confusion. His job is to make you defeated even before you really are defeated. Right. He wants you to think about that battle. He wants you to think about that struggle. He wants you to think about that difficulty. And he wants you to get that white towel. I don't have one right now. But he wants you to get that white towel and just throw it into the ring. Say, I quit before you get started. Well, the devil's a liar because you, you, you are an overcomer. You are victorious, not because you're, you're good enough, not because you know what you're doing, but because you're on the side of the winner. Amen. Amen. You ever see those Super Bowl games or those, those national championships in basketball? Even the jokers who didn't play get a ring. Come on now. Amen. I'm on the winning team. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going to be victorious by default. Yes. But I've got to show up. Yes. Amen? Amen? I've got to be present. I've got to participate. We, we can't let discouragement come into our lives as believers. As Christians, we're not supposed to be so moved by what we see, smell, taste, hear, or feel. We shouldn't be moved by our five senses. Because the Bible says our God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the spiritual realm, the Bible says the prayer is, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the natural manifestation always comes after the spiritual declaration. Let me say it again for my Facebook people. The natural manifestation always comes comes after the spiritual declaration. So when God sees it, we don't see it the same time he does. But when he says it, when he declares it, when he speaks it, then things go into motion. Amen. When is somebody pregnant? At nine and a half months or at the moment of conception? And with the natural eye, you can't easily see conception. Some folks are pregnant for months before they even realize that they're pregnant with life. And it's the same thing in the things of the spirit. When God says you're an overcomer, it might not look like it right now, but you are pregnant with overcoming. When God says you're victorious, you might not see it right now, but in the spiritual realm, it is already done. It is already happening. That's why in heaven, things happen just the way God wants them to. The 
problem and the difficulty is here on earth. Because we have so many excuses. We have so many challenges, amen? And we've got to surround ourselves with the things of God. Amen. Amen. We've got to surround ourselves with the people of God. You know, my wife and I, by the, by the grace of God, the Lord is helping us to be uh, victorious Christians and victorious pastors and victorious leaders. I'm um, 42 years old. I've been preaching since I was 16. And to, to God be the glory, I haven't done anything too crazy or anything too stupid. Let's give God some praise. <laughs> it doesn't mean it hasn't happened in here. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that it hasn't happened in here. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, it hasn't come out. Amen. But, but the beautiful thing, my wife and I, as we set up the strategies for success and victory, we don't set up rules that are based upon our strengths. We set up rules based upon the times that we might be weak. You know, people like Billy Graham and other people like that, they have certain rules that they never meet. They never meet alone with a lady in, in behind closed doors. Right. Well, is it because Billy's lustful or no? He, he might not even have a problem with that. But number one, you don't want to have a bad testimony. That's right. Amen. Because you represent the Lord Jesus Christ. And number two, the Bible says give no place to the enemy. That's right. You know, we've raised a lot of people in the Lord, and especially the young ladies in the faith. We've raised, I mean, hundreds of young men, hundreds of young women in America, probably thousands in Africa and around the world. We've either raised them or had a part to do that. And whenever I meet with the young ladies, and I, I may call them daughters in the Lord, I'm like, look, I don't care who he is. Every man of God might have one bad day once a year. You just make sure you're not the one who's with him. I, I tell him, you always look for where the windows are, where the doors are. If he's not looking out for you, you look out for you. Because right. even the most anointed, powerful man of God can have one bad day. Come on, man. Come on. He, even Jesus on the way to the cross, he, he went to Gethsemane. He wasn't doing no shop dancing then. <laughs> he had no praise report then. He wasn't declaring no prophecies. He wasn't saying the, the, the word of the Lord saith. He was like, please, is there some other way? Man, I preach this thing. I know what the scriptures say. But right now, I just don't feel like shedding my blood on the cross. I don't feel like shedding my blood for them three knuckleheads who are sleeping over there. I don't feel like shedding my blood for those 5,000 that when I started getting deeper into the teaching and said, eat my flesh, drink my blood, they didn't even say, what do you mean? Jesus. They just walked away and left me. I'm supposed to shed my blood for them. And then you want me to shed my blood for those who will be crucifying me on the cross? That's a hard thing to do. He was struggling. Everybody's got a flesh. So what I'm saying is we've got to surround ourselves with the things of God. You've got to surround yourself with the people of God. Man, some of these boxes are going to the ring, and, and in my latest Facebook update, I'm going to ask Bria or somebody to put some Rocky music behind it. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And so you got to check out my Facebook. But, but, but these boxes, like Rocky, can you imagine Rocky going through a fight, and he comes over to the corner, and I think Paulie was the guy who supported him. I guess the guy's name was Paulie. Could you imagine Rocky and Paulie saying, all right, Rocky, Rocky, you can't do this. You may as well quit right now. You can't do this. You don't need somebody in your corner telling you you can't do it. Because that's how you feel yourself. Right. Right. You can do that all by yourself. Right. Amen. Amen. And what you need is you need to surround yourself with the things of God and the people of God. Not for the good day. That's right. That's right. The Bible that's right. says the evil day coming for all of us. That's right. And the evil day doesn't just mean when the devil comes. The evil day just doesn't just mean when the world is destroyed. The evil day is that day when you're like, you know what? I don't feel like being a Christian right now. Jesus. I'm blood bought. I'm saved. But right now I feel like going around the corner. I'm looking for that bar. Where's that old phone number? You ever try to call? Don't no, no say anything. You ever try to look at that old phone number, that old website? You just couldn't remember the Holy Spirit took it from you. But on that day, if it was accessible, you'd go for it. Amen? Because you're weak on that day. Come on now. So you surround yourself. Not because you're weak, but because you're smart. Surround yourself with the people of God. And surround yourself with the things of God. And we have a powerful sermon today. Today I'm going to be, at least I think it's, today I'm going to be talking about being offended. <laughs> talking about being offended. Amen. This is it's a powerful thing, and there's going to be a lot of principles in this. Prayerfully, it will give you some understanding. It will give you some grace. It will give you some help. But this is a very powerful, and it is an important, important thing for us uh, to, to, to definitely look at. Amen. Now, I want us to look at this verse. We have an interesting thing going on. I usually use my 
My, my, my phone would look at verses, but right now we're doing the periscope thing, so I need y'all to help me out. I need the verse where it talks about don't, don't come to the altar, amen. Don't bring your gift to the altar unless you forgive, unless you take care of an offense. So let me get that real quick, amen. So I want to begin there, and it's not in my notes because the Holy Spirit, he always dumps new stuff on me in fresh things, so y'all can help me with that. That's a powerful verse because what this is saying, especially for us as, as church folk, and especially for us as church people, we, we get caught up in the church thing, amen? And we know how to say praise the Lord, we know how to say thank you Jesus, we know how to say amen, others know how to speak in tongues. You know how to make it sound real good. If you can say and speak in tongues on key, you just sound real spiritual. You sound like angels in heaven, man. That was, that was be a saved brother right there. You know, you don't know if he was singing Luther last night and now he's just putting some tongues to it. Uh, but we, we, know how to just, we know how to do the church thing. You know, and sometimes the church thing makes us feel good. And sometimes the church thing doesn't make us feel good. It makes us feel clowny. It makes us feel like a hypocrite because it's just not working right now. And so, so God doesn't want our foundation to be the churchy thing. It, he wants our foundation to be a relational thing. Yeah. Uh, what, what's that? I, I saw your hand, George. Go ahead. 5, 23, 24. Oh, could you read that real quick out loud, please? Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go away. First, be reconciled to your brother, then come offer your gift. Okay, so an ought represents an issue. So this morning, we're going to talk about offenses. What, what is an offense? I need mean, two people up here on the stage with me real quick. Two people up front, one and two. Okay, you know, all right, praise God. See, you got offended because you didn't let him come up. <laughs> one of you stand right there, and one of you stand over here, just on both sides. Spread out quite a bit. So, uh, they're facing each other, okay. So I know it's always some sort of football thing, and that's why Kendall joined the ministry. <laughs> so what we're looking at here is we're going to look at um, offend, uh, offense, which the other way of saying it is the offense. Same word, same thing. And we're going to look at, uh, I guess what you would call the defense, okay? Or what we call offended. Offense, offended. Okay. So what, what I want you to do is I want you to come at him with like a pretend attack. It's like you're swinging in the air before you even get there, whatever. Okay, so that's just, that's, that, that's, that's all right. So what, what Kendall has come with is an offense. Has anybody ever received an offense before? Yeah. Raise your hand, okay? Here's a little about church folk. Can you be honest? Have any of you committed an offense before? Raise your hand. Okay, good. Good to be honest. Hey, man, it's good to be honest. Okay, step on back, right? Now, we're going to see right here. This time when he comes at you, I want you to put your hands up like this. Okay, put your hands up. Okay? Uh, in, in defending yourself. And you come on at him. Okay. Now, now so what happens here is, okay, we, we have an, an offense. We have an offense. You can stop now. We have an offense. Right? But because he was properly protected, we don't have an... Um, he's not offended. That means the defense protected him. Now, this time, put your hands down. Let me see the effects. Come at me. Okay, I want you to kind of just kind of fall down for me. That's like book, okay? So now, and pause for a second. So he was obviously what? Offended. Because the offense didn't have enough defense, right, to stop it. So the, the offense has caused him to be offended. Okay, stand up again. Okay, now this is going to be interesting. Stand over there. Stand over here, okay? Stand still. Now fall down. This is not, this is not in the center of my sermon. He didn't even do nothing. Wow. So he's offended. How, how can you be seated? Get in my hand. That was awesome. How can I make things right with you? And I don't even know I did something to offend you. Let me start off by saying this. I have no offense with anybody in here. <laughs> How many of y'all have ever been offended with me? Raise your hand. Be honest. Be honest. All right, very good. Let me, my wife's not here right now, so I'm offended with her. No, but she's, no way. My wife's not here right now, but she will vouch to you. And she lives with me most of the time. I mean, she's with me all the time, most of the time. <laughs> most of the time, I'm trying to say this. 
okay, okay. But listen, here's, here's what I'm trying to say. She can vouch for me that I've never had a conversation with her, ever, where I said, honey, let's figure out how we can offend Ashley Lee. Like, Ross, you know what? This week's going too well. How, let's see how we can take off Melissa. <laughs> what, what can we do to get under her, her skin, you know? And then that dad's guy, you know, we, we thought he was going to help us in the ministry, move that land. Let's, let's see. <laughs> The Bible does address that. It says, woe unto him that causeth the offense. There are those, the Bible says, in, in Psalms and, 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 and uh, uh, the books of Solomon that lay on their beds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they dream about how can I hurt yeah. others? Yeah. How can I blow up planes? How can I rape the next person? How can I rob a store? And people don't just, most of the stuff doesn't just happen. Right. They plan out some things. They go through the process. And what happens is many times we treat folk like if the stuff they did to us, they did it on purpose. Right. And to make it worse, whether they did it on purpose or not, if we don't address it, two things happen. Now it's your fault. Not that, because they don't know. And you're holding something against them. And in God's eyes, you're not at fault, not them. That's right. Now if you address it, and they say, I don't care what you have to say, now it's their fault. Yeah. Yeah. But we carry stuff that number one, people don't even know they did to us. And there's a second problem. Especially if you're going to be working with someone in ministry yeah. or married to someone or connect. We're going to find out that some of the folk that offend you and some of the folk you, you offend, you're not allowed to run away from. Yeah, that's right. So we're going to find a way to deal with it. God's going to teach us about offenses today and, and, and how to deal with those offenses. But the thing is this. If, if, if you don't tell me that means I will continue to do what? Oh, to offend you. Because I'm evil? No. Because no. I'm wicked? No. Because I'm bad? No. Because I'm bad? No. Because I hate you? No. It's because I simply just don't know. That's right. You, 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 you haven't told me. And we've all, we even at Florida Law, we've all been, <laughs> Miami Bay, we've all been raised differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've all been told by our grandmas, our mamas, our aunties, our grandpapas, our big daddies. We, we've all been told by different people different things are important. Yeah. On the deathbed, I'm about to leave the world, honey. No offense to anybody if you have a loved one down, just acting somehow. Make sure there's nothing else you want. In case they ever take you to the hospital, make sure you're all clean on the road. <laughs> this is your life. Clean underwear is the most. If you want to marry somebody that other director, no, you can't be the one for me. Grandma told me about people like you. <laughs> and you just tell them, baby, I prefer you have some clean underwear. Maybe I'll get some clean underwear. Tell them we can laugh in church. Sometimes the soothest things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't come out of the church saying because some of us have brothers and sisters, blood, yes. that we don't talk to in the mall over stupid stuff. Yes. You you knew I saw that Drake's dress at Macy's first. <laughs> <laughs> you know I was gonna work for the Christmas gathering, so you went and got for the Thanksgiving oh, gathering. Yeah. So and you know I already bought it, and I couldn't take it back because it was on clearance. Well, you corrected my child. Oh. Well, well, maybe if you corrected your child, we wouldn't answer my child. So, I understand that. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily want everybody correcting my child because some folk get carried away, you know? Some folk can take out on your child what they have against you. Yes. So, I'm, I'm preaching all kinds of Come on now. But, but, but the issue here is in the body of Christ, Nothing else you, you remember. There's nothing else you remember today. Remember this. You're not allowed to be offended. That's right. It's illegal to be offended in the body of Christ. But what does somebody keep doing this? The Bible says there's a way to handle that. 
Bring them before the church. You know what I'm saying? Bring them before the pastor. And they still won't listen. Then you're allowed to no longer treat them like a brother or sister. I mean, then there's steps. There are biblical steps for how you, you cut somebody off, but the first step is they need to know you're about to cut them off. But we do the solid cutting. You ever see a pair of scissors that just cuts? It's like cutting through noodles. Don't make no sound. <laughs> you don't even know you've cut them off. And in your heart, you cut them off for life, and they have no clue. And they go out and praise the Lord and this, that, the other. They have no idea they cause an offense. And it's not fair to them. It's not fair to you. We're going to learn, once again, why would offenses come? Because Satan wants to break up a good thing. Yes, right. See, God has a purpose for us working together. God has a plan for us working together. We just don't know about that plan yet. That's right. We just don't know what it is. We just don't know the importance of it. But Satan can see ahead. We're going to find in today's verse, once the devil found a deliverer was coming, he, he killed every Hebrew boy child from the age of two down because he didn't know where the, 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 the deliverer was coming from, but he knew it was coming from somewhere, and so he just messed everything up. See, the devil has no idea how and where Revive Church is going to explode and take over Charlotte for Christ. And so his goal is not to be able to focus on what that issue is. His goal, amen, would be to mess the whole entire thing up. Do you know why? Can I tell you why? Because not even I know how Revive Church is going to take over Charlotte. So if he put me in a chair and put a light bulb in my face and tied me down and started whooping me and, and pouring water on my face, I'd be like, devil, I don't even know as much as you know. You know more than I do. You can't even get the information out of me because the Holy Spirit moves like the Bible says. He's like the wind. You can't see where he's coming from or where he's going. And God never tells you too much because you might not be able to handle it and you might feel a leak. But the devil knows it's coming from somewhere. We know, how many of y'all know God's about to use this church in my gospel? Awesome? He better. Some of y'all sacrifice. You better, you better be like, you like, what? You gotta move to here, amen. You should not move and leave y'all here. I'm moving to here too. We, we better be expecting God to do something. But let's stop looking for deliverance to come from. But the Bible says deliverance will come from here. We'll come, we don't know where it's gonna come from. We don't know who God's gonna use up in here, amen? It might be Ethan. God might have all this for Harris to raise up and bring the letters. And we're going to clap for him. Amen. But, but we know God has put together a ministry like this for his glory. Yes. For his honor. Yes. And for his pleasure. Yes. And because the devil doesn't know exactly how it's going to come, his job is to break it up any which way that he can. And if he can't break it up by people doing things bad to each other on purpose, he will break it up by people getting offended for stuff that was never even done. We have to work through our offense. Let's go to the word of God. All right. So we understand what an offense is. Okay. And uh, here's, here's the definition uh, of an offense. Let me find it here. All right. Well, I, I had it here. Give me one second. It's okay. I, I had it right here until it's just gone. That's all right, though. Amen. So from what, what I did earlier in, in getting our definition here for what an offense is and what an offense does, all right? Hey, John, give me a favor since you're up anyway. Can you go out to my car and see if I'm missing a sheet of paper in the back seat of the car? Okay, all right. But from the definition of offense, what an offense is, it's actually a feeling or an emotion that comes because you feel like somebody has done you wrong. Now the key here, the key here, is not, I want to focus today on not what the person did. Why? Because you can't control what people do. That's you ever heard of a defensive driver? Mm -hmm. A defensive driver is someone that drives in a way where you understand everybody might not see you. Right. Well, I have the right of way. You might be dead right. 
It might still hit you while you're right now, but you're still not going to be here tomorrow. So the fact is you live your life in a way where you are defending yourself, you are protecting yourself, understanding that the Word of God says that offenses will come. Sometimes they'll come on purpose, yeah. but sometimes they'll come by mistake, they'll come by, mis by accidents, or they'll come by misunderstanding. Yeah. Now, I like to think that 90% of the offenses that come from a good church are not coming on purpose. Yeah. They're coming because we have different backgrounds. They're coming because I don't know what you're hurting in or what I'm not hurting in. You ever see two folks joke with each other? I mean, they'll talk about each other's mom and everything. And one will say something about their, their dog and their fish. All of a sudden, you touch a hot spot, and they're ready to beat you up over their fish. Yes. And you, you think they're crazy, but you don't understand that their dying uncle gave them that fish. You don't know what's so deep about that fish or what it means or, or what it stands for. And there's no way. Now look, I have a hard enough time figuring out my own life. I don't have time to figure out all the qualms and issues about you. I can't even figure out my wife. All my kids are different. And so, I, so the things we have to live our lives in a way where if offenses do come, we address them in a godly manner. And if somebody says, hey, I don't appreciate you stepping on this thing right here or dealing with this, and as long as you love them, and as long as what they're asking you to do is not against scripture, then you stop doing it. In America, they call that bully. Yeah. When you know somebody says, I've had enough, I just, right. and you just keep up, that's bullying. Even in church, bishops bully, pastors right. bully, so-called prophets and prophetesses, right. they bully, they push things too far. Amen. Right. That's right. And so I'm not the thing we're surrounding ourselves with people that may not be doing these things on purpose. Therefore, we've got to ask God to help us not to get offended so easily and so much because the offenses will come. Man, some of us live our lives just thinking somebody's got something against you. That might have been your last church, but hopefully not here. That might have been, you, you know, your other relationship. That might have been something out there in the world. But now that you're in the body of Christ, let this mind be in you, yes, which is also in Christ Jesus. Have a new mind. And if you discover folk are offending you on purpose, then you need to really try to deal with it. If you can't, pray about whether you need to go somewhere else. That's right. But as far as I know, I don't think I live my life in a way where I try to offend anyone on purpose. And I don't think any of you who are members have ever come to me and said, Pastor Doss, I don't like this. I don't appreciate this. Could you change this? And I pretty much said to you, I don't care what you have to say. Has that ever happened? No. It's okay to you, sir. And so we, we have to work with each other with love and work. Like I said, I am not... Amen, amen. I mean, really, it's, it's, you know, I have nothing against anyone. That's why I feel like the Lord called me to, to do this today, because there's been times where I, I may have something to struggle or issue, or I'm upset about something, but today's one of those days when I am cool with everybody. I don't know what tomorrow's going to look like, but today's, today's good. Okay. So what, what do offenses do? They stop, block, hinder, slow down, make things awkward, and make it harder for us to work together in the future. Yeah. That's what offenses do. So the enemy loves offenses. Number one, it just stops what God is doing. You ever been working on a project with someone or something, and all of a sudden an offense comes, you go, oh, hold on. They may not know it. You were putting 100% into something or 80%. All of a sudden, an offense came or something you didn't like. All of a sudden, you pull the brakes back to 20%. They don't even know it. But in your heart, you know it. And God knows it because an offense came. The response react. It blocks. It, it blocks us from, from doing the things we're supposed to do. It sets up roadblocks. It, it, it keeps that flow, you know. That's why sometimes it's, they say it's, it's good for you not to know too much about your pastor right. or your leader because when you get too friendly, you might find out that, that, you know, that your leaders have issues too. That's right. He forgot to pay his car tax last month. He's a heathen. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> he bounced a check. That's, that's the Satan right there. You, got, you can't trust him with money. Like, what in the world? <laughs> Amen. It's real. It's real. <laughs> 
And so we have to glorify these folk that look good to us, but we never get close enough to smell what they really smell like. Because right, right. everybody, amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Offenses will hinder. They will hinder the flow of the Holy Spirit. Offenses will hinder what God is trying to do. Because we, we can no longer just focus on the Lord. I've been in there. I've been there, man. You in church and worshiping, you, you're supposed to be thinking about the Lord, but you're like, man, he owe me five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when the church secretary didn't give my tax return slip, and I got to turn She said she was going to send next week. Yeah, you, you don't know that it's in your spam. Uh, that she did send it, but your fake email account, because you went to Gmail, you got fake mail, amen. <laughs> Put it into the spam, and now you have an offense with her, not knowing that the enemy set the whole thing up to hinder. Now God can't speak to the church like he wants to. Prophecies get twisted. I can't have offense with folks, especially for Holy Ghost prayer night. The Lord says this, and, and, and the Lord says you only five out. It's tempting for the flesh to flow through the things yes. of the spirit. That's right. So we've got to squash those offenses. But offenses will... They'll come. Whether you do them on purpose or not, they're going to come. They're going to happen. And the enemy likes to manipulate those things. Any kind of movement causes friction. That's right. And friction causes potential offense. We've got to work through it. And you know, the devil's not going to sit back and let us do great things for the Lord. Also, slow things down. Yeah. This has happened to me before, all the time. It's like, man, I'm offended or whatever. We start to slow things. The vision's the same. The mission is the same, but instead of going 80, 80 miles an hour, we're going 20 miles an hour because we now have an issue of trust. Yeah. One of my vehicles I had a while ago, we were driving back and forth to Virginia, and it started shaking real bad. We didn't know what was wrong with it at first. We know now, and then, you know, we, we, we've been able to address that in different ways. We didn't know what was wrong with it at first. So we're driving to Virginia. I'm doing 70, 75 miles an hour, you know, comfortably just flying down the road. When the car started shaking, we took that car down to 25 miles an hour. 30 miles an hour. Because in case something happened, we just didn't trust it. Were, were we still going to Virginia? Yeah. Did we change the vision? No. Did we change the direction? We just changed the what? The speed. And that's still a victory for the enemy. If you slow down, you might miss what God has ahead for you because you got there too late. Wow. Offenses don't need to be a part of ministry. Offenses make things awkward. Yes, praise the Lord, God. You know, God bless. Hey, good to see you. I always praise the Lord. It's not the same. Yeah, it's that right. camaraderie, that friendship is not there because right. there's something that happened, and nine right. times that the other person didn't even know what's going on. Right. And now it's awkward. Yeah. Wow. Come on now. Uh, true. And offenses wow. can make it harder to work together in the future. Yeah. Look. Guys, all we have is each other. If our church never grows, all we have is each other. Amen? We need to learn how to love each other through stuff and, and deal with each other. Like I, said, I, I promise you, I'm not preaching on I don't even know if anybody is offended with anybody here. All I know is I'm not offended with any of them. And for those who missed today's sermon, make sure they get a copy. I will have it. It's on Periscope, amen? amen. Kaleidoscope, whatever you use on some kind of scope. There it is. All right, here we go. Let's go. Let's give you some scriptures now, okay? Get into this thing carefully. Now, with, with that being said, when someone does get offended, you can't just tell them to just get over it. <laughs> That's also another misconception. <laughs> What is the definition of being offended? Offended means you have been pierced in your armor. Sometimes the offense is all about the day, what you're going through. I mean, every day, man, every day, this might be all right, you know? This, for three years, and one day I do this, and because of something he's going through, I've now offended him. What's wrong with you, man? That's how we always used to play with it. You ever seen two kids play fight? You know, any moment. Yep. <laughs> every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. Some you know, something that becomes a real fight yep. at some point. And so what happens is the solution is not to tell folks just to get over it. So on our end, we need to pray and ask God to give us tougher skin. 
and on, 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 that's on the receiving end, God, give me tougher skin so I won't get so easily offended. But on the giving end, Lord God, help me be more compassionate and loving so I'm not offensive. Because there's some people who don't care. That's right. That's right. Here's what I think. Here's what I think. <laughs> belongs to you. Like every scripture was for you, you know? Like God's words for me, no, it's for us. And sometimes you're on the offending side of that, amen? amen. And so I think it is believers, I love this, if we can make adjustments, we can minimize those offenses. We can minimize those situations that will try to hinder or slow down what God is trying to do. And that's all we can do, because offenses will come. All right. But when you do get offended, that means your armor was pierced. And when your armor is pierced, you can't pretend like you're not offended. That's right. That's right. So tell someone don't get offended. That should have been done before they got offended. That's right. Tell someone that you have thicker skin. That needs to be done when there's no offense. And when the offense comes, tell them that makes actually more of an offense. You now offended them more. So, so it's, it's a time. It's a timely thing. And so the issue, the issue is this. The issue is this, that once you are offended, you cannot ignore um, the situation and pretend like the offense didn't happen, because it did. Now, I'm going to hit you with this. Some folk are actually more offended, not because they're offended, but they're offended because they got offended. They're mad at themselves. Wow. Yeah. Can't believe I, I, that, that, that knucklehead, no. that baby daddy from 10 years ago, that jerk on Facebook, that person on, on, from middle school can still call me uh, can still call me bobblehead and I get mad. I'm mad that I still get mad about getting mad. Yeah. That's deep. Yeah. That's why we come to Revive Church. That's why. <laughs> Look, we, we love this kind of teaching, man. Sometimes it's not me who offended you, it's you who offended you. Because you're mad that I was able to offend you. <laughs> you're offending me. No, you know, and, 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 and you know what that is? That's flesh. And flesh has no place in the kingdom of God. That's pride. To admit, see, some, some of us will not admit we're offended because admitting we're offended is telling other folk that we're weaker than what they thought we were or what we thought we were, so we're not going to deal with the offense as the word of God says. I'm going to pretend the offense didn't happen. I'm going to try to work through it, and I'm making it worse. I'm doing it, agitating the wound because it'll never heal until you expose the wound. The more you cover it, it can't dry out. Right, right. That's walking the line, man. We, we just heard earlier, how many of you have ever been offended? Raise your hand. Yeah. Okay, every, so look, let, let's walk in the light, man. Yeah. Let's walk in the light so the enemy does not get glory and work these things out to destroy our lives, okay? Right, we're we're going to wrap this thing up soon. We've got some powerful things for you today. Those who usually get offended the most, amen. Don't raise your hand, don't point. Don't laugh at people in this laugh already. Those who usually get offended the most are not the ones who are necessarily weak. And I have found that those who usually get offended the most are the ones who usually have the most principles. Because an offense is a violation. You broke a rule, so you caused an offense, and now I'm going to respond to the offense that you caused. I, I, I can't play rugby. Not because I'm not tough enough and not strong enough. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I don't know the rules. Anybody whistle? Who can whistle real loud? You whistle? Okay. Every time I turn, Jordan whistle, okay? <laughs> Not one loss in that one. Like the referee kind of like, oh, okay. I can't play the game. Because I'm offending. I'm causing an offense every move I make because I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, basketball, I'm going to get less whistles. Yeah. I have a better understanding. Football, I might, I still understand football. It's too much. 
early movement, all this other kind of stuff, and wrong setup, and legal defense, too much for me, man. I just do some, some tackle in the grass somewhere. But, but when, there are, when there are too many rules, come on, helping somebody, then you're helping to cause too many offenses. Why? Not because you shouldn't be principled. And being principled is awesome. Here's the problem. Most folk can't follow your principles in too many. We just can't follow your rules. Imagine somebody, I invented the most amazing game ever. <laughs> well, if we can't understand your rules, and we can't play it, then guess what? It's going to be your game. <laughs> Nobody else will ever play that game with you. You're by yourself. You ever play cards or Uno or someone like that to keep yeah. you in this world? If you are a principled person, do not change your principles. Do not change your standards. But God has to give you grace on how to deal with others. That's right. That's a good, I mean, that could be the sermon. That's a good word right there. Because some churches will tell you, drop your standards. Drop your principles. Man, we can do whatever we want to do. Whether it's if you church, you can, you know, marry gay folk, do Halloween, cuss out. It doesn't matter. It's wild out. We don't need any principles. Some churches have so many principles, you know, you, you start to get back out the door. You're not welcome in my church. <laughs> and it's real. So, so how do we handle this? Because let me tell you something. If you lower your standards to yourself, you've defiled yourself. Yes. That's right. And you can't be true to yourself. You can't be true to nobody. That's right. So you don't lower your standards. You don't lower your principles. But instead of throwing red cards, throw some yellow ones. Yeah. Look up soccer later on. Amen. Right. Soccer, yellow ones are warnings. That means I'm still letting you know what you did was wrong. I don't appreciate it. I don't, that's not the way I function, but I'm still going to love you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Amen. I don't, have to, I don't have to cut you off. I don't have to say you're not on my team no more. I'm not going to help you no more. I ain't coming to a church no more. What I can do, though, is make it clear. So when you cross that, I'm going to take another five more minutes of your time. Yeah. We're going to talk about it again. <laughs> I may not do anything about it because God's the judge, but I'm going to take five more minutes of your time. And I'm going to keep working. You know, uh, I think it's Mikey, Michael Don. She's done. He would rather get a whooping than have my mom, my wife talk to him. I just call my wife, my mom, don't tell us anything. But I'm going to talk to him because she did turn. But, 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 you know, no, but listen, listen, he would rather have a whooping. Yes. He's like, no, just get over with it. Yeah. The tougher issues need the most humor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not being yeah. silly up here. Yeah. So some of you, you're like, wow, Pastor Doss, by his my God, actually found a way to talk about mm -hmm. this sensitive yeah. thing that people don't even want to talk about. That's right. Yeah. Don't move your principles. In fact, I would encourage you to have more principles and more standards. Why? Because God gave them to you, yeah. and for some people, that's the only thing keeping you. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, folks, you start messing with principles, you're like, well, I guess nothing matters, and it'll go further out into the world than you ever could imagine. Don't mess with people's principles, and don't mess with their standards, and don't mess with their convictions, because God gave them to them for a reason, and those are a reminder to them of how they're supposed to walk with the Lord. But now when you deal with others, you can't be the judge. That's right. That's right. Because they may not be where you are right now. That's right. That's right. Amen. Let's give God a Verse 1, I'm going to drop something really exciting. Luke chapter 17, 1. Jesus said to his disciples, Offenses will certainly come. Read from, I'm reading from the Holman Christian Standard Bible, but you read from whatever translation you have. Offenses will certainly come, but woe to the one they come through. <laughs> So once an offense happens, okay, it just happens, but God, God is going to hold you, um, he's going to hold you accountable if you are causing these offenses on purpose. Yeah. You're causing these things foolish. Because 
There's a difference in I fell into sin and I'm a wicked person. Wickedness is you plan that thing. You strategize it so it will go that way. Falling into sin means I was innocent. Yeah. I got tempted to laugh. Both are wrong, but there's a difference, and God will judge those things differently. That's right. You know, you can go to jail for planning something. Yep, yep, yep. It's called conspiracy. Yeah. Even though you, you didn't blow the school up, you got the drawings. You're gonna have to go have some time, and you can't say I'm innocent because I ain't do it yet. Wickedness is when you pre-plan stuff. So if you're calling the offenses on purpose, this is not a life sermon for you. Get it right. That's right. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. But offenses will come, and you can't stop that. They'll come. We can minimize it, but they'll come. Matthew chapter 2, verse 18. So now you've been offended. You've been offended. The offense has come. And because it's a violation, and if you're a principled person, you are looking for payback. Even though you call yourself saved, amen, it's not enough to just, you know, say, well, you know, Lord, forgive them. Uh, you want some sort of payment. You want them to make it right, to somehow make it right and make it up to you. And that's not a bad thing to want, but it just might not happen. And you still have to be able to forgive. Here's the word of God saying about those things, okay? First one here, Matthew chapter 2, verse 18. New Living Translation. A cry was heard 